Hi, everybody. Uh, hi. Hi. Oh. Yes, we're the Skeleton Crew, and we're not going to take time to do our normal introductions right now because it is 12.23 a.m. where we are. <laughs> um, but we just watched episode two of Prehistoric Planet season two, and we got a really, really big surprise, and we kind of need to talk about it right now. So uh, in the middle of the episode, this was a great episode for me in general because I've worked a lot on Mongolian dinosaurs, so seeing the emphasis on the Mongolian sauropod migration and Velociraptor, which is a dinosaur that uh, Alex is leading a really big project on. Uh, Hi, doing, everybody. Yeah, we're doing a lot of work <laughs> on Velociraptor um, with another colleague who's leading a part of that large project, uh, Mark Powers. Um, we've done a lot of work on Velociraptor and seeing it featured in Prehistoric Planet so prominently is really fun. Um, and there was a scene in the trailer that showed what appeared to be Velociraptor uh, at night. Uh, and we commented on that in our trailer reaction videos. You can go watch them. But interestingly, uh, it turns out that that wasn't Velociraptor. And we got to hear David Attenborough, <laughs> when they cut away to the dinosaur, say a Kurukula. This is exciting to me and to Alex because Alex and I named Kurukula about a year and a half ago. So this is the first. This is the first genus of dinosaur I ever named. Uh, Alex, was it your first new taxon? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was. It was my second new species, but my first species was another species within the genus Cetacosaurus. So you don't get as, quite as much clout for that. Um, and Cetacosaurus is so speciose anyway that it doesn't really matter. Um, but. Uh, Kurukula was a dinosaur I described as part of my doctoral dissertation. Alex was second author on the manuscript. He helped me out a lot with the work. Um, and so this is just incredibly f***ing exciting. Um, we're really, really excited about it. I did a double take because I... Yeah, we missed it. You missed oh, yeah, it. I'm shocked that they missed it. Because <laughs> I was like, I was looking at Alex. I was like, did he not notice that they just said the dinosaur? I was writing... A, a, a email to uh, an undergraduate I was working with and was not paying attention. Oh my god! <laughs> so I was like, "Kuru, Kuru what now? Kuru, Kuru, what did David Attenborough say?" So a little, so a little bit of background, um, and we're going to keep this very brief. Kuru Kula is based on a single specimen that was collected in 1991 in Mongolia. This was the first year where the American Museum of Natural History was partnering with the Mongolian Academy of Sciences to do new investigations of the Gobi Desert. This actually predates the discovery of most of the really, really productive fossil-bearing localities in the Gobi, so a lot of the famous fossils were actually discovered later. Kuru was found in rock units that are a little bit younger than most of what the AMNH crews in Mongolia have found, and so it's actually time-appropriate for Prehistoric Planet, which is cool it uh it doesn't change a lot but velociraptors from the campanian stage of the cretaceous which is a little older curricula seems to come from right about the campanian maestrictian boundary although the exact age of the rocks is unknown so it's time appropriate kuru uh, was discovered and prepared and then kind of just left unstudied in the collections of the american museum of natural history um and i didn't even know about the specimen until mark norell my graduate advisor who discovered it uh, pointed me towards it and asked if I wanted to go ahead and describe it, which of course I said yes to because that's really exciting. Uh, and the paper came together pretty quickly. Kuru's a really unique dromaeosaur. It's got a bunch of odd traits like a fang-like big tooth in the lower jaw at the third tooth position, which they don't quite depict it with in Prehistoric Planet. I'll go into why I think in a second. Um, and reduced killing claws on the toes. It looks like Kurukula was kind of adapted more for speed than for hunting large prey, which gotta go fast. Which is depicted in the episode, right? Because they have it as a, you know, they show it in this kind of ecological mode where it's eating the eggs of Carithoraptor, a large oviraptorosaur, the um, slowest of prey. The well, the eggs, egg. egg, yes. Um, I think it probably was able to hunt like fast-moving prey a lot, but I think it's equally plausible that it was using its longer limbs to move very quickly and try to steal food, and that the fact that it has reduced killing claws is perfectly compatible with what they show here. Well, Jimbo. So, yes. It was capable of hunting prey so fast that, like the Flash, it could access the speed force and go... And go to China. Forward in time to China. 
<laughs> to when it wasn't alive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool. Um, it's cool that it, it, it's very Brad, cool. It's it. just it. It's you know. Forgive me for being genuine for a moment. <laughs> um, I I really do apologize for this. But often when you're a young person in the sciences trying to make a name for yourself, it's you often feel kind of like you're just fighting against a tidal wave or talking to a brick wall, depending on what kind of science you're doing, where you just don't really feel like you're making that much of an impact. And That's why we made a YouTube channel. That's why we made a YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, it is just really nice to have an animal that you named, that you led the initial study of, that did not exist in people's minds or the scientific consensus before your work, get literally brought back to life with the most stunning special effects, get discussed by David Attenborough in his narration, this voice that we all grew up listening to who taught us a lot of what we know about the natural world. This is really cool, and I'm really happy about it. You might I'm... be able to tell I'm a little giddy. It, it's, it has not been long since I found out about this. Live, yeah. Less than 30 minutes ago. Uh, you know, delighted. <laughs> hearing David Attenborough said it makes it all real. Right. It's like the you made it moment, right? It's like South Park making fun of you. That's how you know you made it. Exactly. Yeah. It's a sensation. It's a feeling our squamate compatriots will never experience. Hey, <laughs> I'm. No, Amelia will. I will. I might. You might. You never know. No, there's no, they're never going to make a documentary that has a fucking lizard in it. They should. <laughs> the name. No, it, it, no, in all seriousness, it slaps, and I've already uh, sent excited text messages to many people I know who would yeah. care about this. Yeah, same same here. It's it's really exciting. So what's actually kind of funny is that me and Alex probably shouldn't have been that surprised that Kuru was in this episode, because uh, the scientific advisor for Prehistoric Planet, Dr. Darren Nash, actually told me that Kuru could make an appearance in the show um, when I talked to him at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting this past year in Toronto. Um, it's just that he didn't really say it was going to definitely appear in the next season. He just said, you know, maybe in the next season we'll have Kuru Kula. And I told Alex very excitedly about this. And then we saw the trailers come out and there was no indication of another Velociraptor-like dinosaur in it. And then none of the press discussed it as one of the new species being described, being shown in the documentary. So we just kind of thought, all right, maybe it'll come in the future if it does come. Or maybe Darren was just being nice and showing that he read our paper. Um, right. Which would have been fine, too. It's nice to be nice to people. Um, but, yeah, just a complete, a complete surprise. Um, really, really exciting. Uh, it's just, you, it's nice to feel like you've made it and you've kind of gotten something you've done, uh, picked up in a, in a bigger way than just your papers. And viewers, we're going to become insufferable <laughs> about this. <laughs> it's gone. We have learned all the wrong lessons. Yeah. Uh, and it will go immediately to our heads. Oh, absolutely. This is already there. There is no coming back from this. The back of my head is expanding posteriorly like a xenomorph skull. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to knock uh, off of shelves. <laughs> it's pretty neat. God damn it. I'm f***ing blurry. I'm radiating with so much <laughs> excitement that my camera can't focus on me. Yeah. It's really exciting. Um, it's really, really exciting. So one thing you may notice about Kurukula is that it has a name that's not like a lot of dinosaur names. It doesn't end in Saurus and it doesn't sound Latin or Greek. Um, and there's kind of a reason for that. Right. So at the, the AMNH, especially with the, the Gobi dinosaurs, there's kind of a tradition for naming them after the local deities. Um, and one day I remember James and I, for no reason in particular, I don't think were wandering around the AMNH. I think it was probably during business hours, not as fun as after hours, but uh, whatever we were wandering around uh, we're on the second floor in the Hall of Asian Peoples. And there we were down um which hall? Which which side is that? The one You mean left or right? The it's on the right it's side. It's on the right, yeah. yeah. It's on the right side. So if you go down the right side, there's this kind of wall of display of different tapestries and sculptures and things of various deities um from Mongolia. And we were finding ones that had been named 
uh, that dinosaurs have been named after before, like you know, Mahakala and Shri Devi and all those other guys. High Agriva as well, yeah. High Agriva, yeah. Um, oh, and the other one, uh, the the Ceratopsian. Begsy. Beg, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, and at this point, you'd realized you'd had the real... So we, we shared an office space um, at the emanation. You'd realized it was a new thing at that point. But I don't think... And you, yeah, and obviously, you hadn't named it yet. Uh, this was also happening during the end of your third year, right? Yeah. Which, so at the Gilder School, we have a four-year program, which means in your third year, you transition into a being that isn't of this earth, and you're <laughs> frantic, and a lot is happening. Basically, that's the year where you start sending out real job applications, uh, which is what was happening. And we came across Kurukola, and one of the, the description, part of the description about it was that it's a deity that's often invoked during times of transition or change. Yeah, mm -hmm. particularly generated during paper, life right? transitions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I did. I wrote yeah. that into the paper um, where I just said, you know, I think, I mean, I remember just talking about it with you, but I was like, given that my whole life's about to change, you know, I had been at the AIM and H PhD program for a while. I was about to find a job somewhere. This is before I'd even contacted the folks at NC State about the postdoc offer here. So I really had no idea where I was going to be, where, you know, if I would even be in the United States. I, you know, I was considering trying to do something in Germany or South Africa. A lot of uncertainty. Um, and it kind of just felt right to name the new species I was working on after a deity that was particularly associated with these times of transition um, in Tibetan Buddhism. Um, and to split a perfectly good name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Another this, tradition. Yeah, this is a name so that if tradition. There's ever a, if there's ever a second... Uh, species named in the genus Kuru, it makes no f sense. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Um, all, but it's a cool name. It's a cool name, and uh, genera don't necessarily mean anything anyway, so we're not particularly Yeah, I mean, oh no, another monospecific mono dinosaur genera. Who... Right. Uh, oh, oh no. It's not like there's a thousand of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was it was exciting. And so this was a really great paper to work on as well, because, I mean, co-authoring it with me, we're not just my advisor, uh, Mark Norell, and of course, Alex, but also um, Alex's PhD advisor, Anjan Buller, and um, one of my longest standing scientific mentors, who I learned a lot of my initial skills from, um, and who's helped me a lot in this journey, Alan Turner. Um, so yeah, it was really, it was, it, it was a wonderful paper to get to work on. It was just like a group of people I've been friends with for a long time, who I trust a lot, who I know well and work well with. And it was a really special project. I, I enjoyed working on that paper quite a bit. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was a fun it was time. One of, the, one of the few actual afternoons I, I've spent in this PhD program, just sitting in a basement with like boxes of bones. And I'm going, here's one bone. Right. <laughs> with the Danonica <laughs> stuff, not, not the... Right. Right, I should say mm -hmm. Alex's main contribution was really adding a lot of comparisons to Deinonychus to the manuscript because the holotype... Yeah, and some of the Velociraptor had. stuff we had cranial scans of. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. 92 and all that jazz. What a, what, what a, what a hoot. What a hoot and a holler. Exactly. Yeah, just what a, what a wonderful little... Oops, I just hit my mic stand. Um, what a wonderful surprise to have very late on a monday night now that we've talked so much about the paper that alex and i wrote about kurukula um if any of you want to read that paper it is actually open access uh it was published in the journal american museum novitatis which is the in-house descriptive journal for the american museum of natural history um every paper in that journal is freely accessible by anybody one nice thing about this journal is that the journal gives us really um large and high quality illustrations with and an unlimited number in color and not only are these really good for anybody but we benefit especially because we were working with the exceptionally talented uh, scientific illustrator mick ellison he's worked at the am h for a really long time now his dinosaur art and photography have literally been on the cover of the new york times and time magazine um, he's just the best of the best he can take photographs of fossils like nobody else in the world the amount of detail that you see in them is wonderful and you know as much as i like to think that the 40 something pages of anatomical description that alex and i wrote for the specimen uh is the valid or is the valuable part of the paper 
Um, I don't think the paper would be worth anything without mix illustrations. They just yeah. really take it to the next level. And so even if you I don't want to read anything, any a single word that we wrote. Oh, it's, a breezy, it's a breezy read. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty nice. And, yeah, it's uh, not bad. I referenced it for my how for how to write some of the methods parts of my one of my Mosasaur papers. Yeah. Tight. No, it's a good yeah. paper. Um, I like to think so, at least. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. When we talk more about the episode broadly, I will I will raise yeah. more yeah. more to say about the inclusion of Karitha Raptor and Kuru and where it's placed in the episode. Um, but I'll save that for the the broader video. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. I mean, it's we'll talk a lot about these things, but it's uh, yeah. It's Damn, I don't know how the other episodes are going to live up. I, they won't. I don't think we can watch anymore. <laughs> I. This is it. There's there's simply no way for it to ever live up to what we've experienced here. Anyway, um, that's it for this very exciting update about Prehistoric Planet Season 2. Um, we're Remember that the other YouTube channels about paleontology you watch don't have people who name the things and the things you watch. It's not nothing that we're naming the animals that are showing up in the docs. That's a, right. you know, I, I'm just going to say we offer a unique perspective that many other content creators on this platform uh, don't right there are not a lot oh, of cool. content creators on youtube who are involved in research like we are and really like are contributing to the current understanding of science as is being disseminated now to the general public exactly and yeah. that speaks to the fact that we're cool not desperate for relevance and attention right not at all <laughs> um and with not that the second thing the first thing right not desperate for relevance and attention and with that remember to like <laughs> and subscribe <laughs> Please, uh, yeah, validate please. me. If you want us to name more dinosaurs that appear in future seasons of Prehistoric Planet, please keep our endorphins high. By yeah, I was planning on never doing it ever again. Right, no, neither was I. But here we are. We have to keep the train going. Anyway, guys, thank you so much yeah, for watching. It's... We're going to have a lot more to say about Prehistoric Planet Season 2. Um, I'm enjoying these episodes. Yes, we're enjoying them. Uh, we're going to release more content where we kind of go in depth on each episode uh, with our reactions to everything, but given the big surprise here and how personal this dinosaur was to us, uh, we wanted to God, get something they out even more figured its palette. They figured it's, its like palette. Very, I mean, it was almost impossible to see, and there might be issues, but it's like, it's like uh, David Attenborough's hand was reaching out from the television screen, caressing the side of my face and going, you did a good job. It's like they saw us being like slightly critical of Prehistoric Planet earlier today, and Darren was like, <laughs> Get David back in the studio. We have to re-edit it for these <laughs> nerds. <laughs> yeah. We're changing. We're changing what dinosaur it is so that they stop. They. Were, it was the right move. We'll stop. It was the right move. Yes, we will never criticize the show again. All right. Okay. I gotta. Yeah. All right. I we're gonna go to bed. Yes. All right. Anyway. See you guys next time. <laughs>